Good morning, and welcome to this, our Eucharistic celebration for the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's begin with our opening hymn. I heard the voice of Jesus. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down the weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water. Thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. Our entrance antiphon this morning comes to us from Psalm 130. If you, O Lord, lay bare our guilt, who could endure it? But you are forgiving God of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order to celebrate our sacred mysteries today, let us first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have healed the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. In Adam's sin, the gates of heaven were closed, but we were made one with God and heirs to the kingdom of heaven in our baptism. We are thankful for our redemption. May Almighty God forgive you your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now begin the Liturgy of the Word. Let us pray today in quiet for the grace of sincerity. Father in heaven, the hand of your loving kindness powerfully yet gently guides all in the moments of our day. Go before us in our pilgrimage of life, anticipating our needs, and prevent our failing. Send your spirit to unite us in faith, that sharing in your service we, we, we may rejoice in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two words are th these words that are now coming to us from the Book of Wisdom, from the mouth of King Solomon, pray for practical skill and insight, as well as knowledge. Hear now these words from Wisdom. I prayed and prudence was given to me. I pleaded and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches to be nothing in comparison with her. 
nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is but a little sand, and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and to countless riches at her hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm today is Psalm 90. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. God's word to us requires us to make a decision. Christians are called to witness to real values leading to happiness by their lifestyles. In biblical terms, these values are those that witness to the kingdom of God, as initiated already on earth. Whether married or single, for the sake of God's kingdom, our way of life should be marked by an all-penetrating word of God. Hear now these words from the book of Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even deeper between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern distractions and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare now for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Join me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, be in my heart and on my lips, and I will really proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading of the holy gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran, ran, ran up to him, knelt down before him, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. And honor your mother and your father. The man replied, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus looked at him lovingly and said, You are lacking in one thing. Go sell all you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At that statement his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at these words. So Jesus again said to them, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? 
Well, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said, Then who can be saved? Jesus said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> All things are possible with God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Throughout the ages, human beings have attempted to discern the mind of the Creator. The first discernment was that the Creator must exist. For all that we see around us, all the physical universe that is in front of us and we enjoy on a daily basis could certainly have not come all by itself. It must have had a cause. And since things are orderly in this world and progress with a clear line of thought and with clear rules for their existence, there must have been an intelligence behind the creation. So for me and for billions like me, it is not difficult for us to discern that there is a creator, and we call that creator God. But for us to understand the mind of God is something we will never achieve as human beings. Jesus Christ, therefore, came down uh, from heaven to us, was incarnate God, made man. Why made man? Because he needed to relate to us, to human beings who had no way to relate to the Creator. When we think about this mindset that gave his only Son for our salvation, we think of those who have human beings who have sacrificed their children for the good of all, and we see that this is no small effort and no small accomplishment. It also doesn't seem like something that we could do as human beings. But then we remember, as in the words of today's Gospel, that all things are possible with God. So would God set up a physical universe subject to physical laws, subject to all the things that we have observed in our scientific nature, in our curiosity that we have discovered, and go beyond those laws? We don't know. But we do believe that he did when he incarnated his only son to be a human being. So today we have the gospel, and in our story, we have the story of this young man. And we must assume that this young man was of wealth, because it said he possessed many things. <clears throat> in Jesus' day, there was the upper class and the destitute, for all practical purposes. Slaves were of the lowest social class, but they didn't own anything. They didn't have property. They didn't have the means of production for themselves. So we can't consider them in the strata of the economics of the first century. So there were those who worked hand-to-mouth for an existence, and there were those with great wealth. We must assume that the young man was of the latter type. And we can also assume that he probably, by virtue of his wealth, owned slaves. And in those days, slaves were possessions. And Jesus does not come out right to say that slavery is wrong, for it is the social way of life in his time. But slaves were treated as chattel. And if, in fact, he sold his slaves and received remuneration for them, they would then go into the household of someone else and continue to be slaves. That was their lot in life. But the young man's response was not eager for these instructions. He didn't say, oh boy, I'm going to go do that and follow you, for you are so great. He was saddened. And we don't know what happened to him after this story. 
we can presume that he went back to his old way of life, presumably also that he was dissatisfied with it. For although he observed the law, and therefore was an observant Jew, he was not satisfied. Otherwise, why would he become, uh, why would he come to the teacher? And why would he ask to join him? We are also asked to join the teacher. We are asked to give of ourselves for the benefit of others. And in our modern society, that takes on many ramifications. We are not meant to be destitute. <clears throat> Poverty as a way of life is not something to seek after. It wasn't something to seek after in Jesus' time. But it was the way of life of many as it is today. And as they have this way of life, they must also think in terms of what they can do to serve the Lord. And that might be giving all they have for the benefit of others. So if you are in a service capacity in this world, whether you're a first responder or one who takes care of people in a dining establishment, or a caregiver in a nursing home, or any other such service industries, your joy should be in giving all that you have for the benefit of others. This is what Jesus commanded the young man to do. And if you are a person of station, and you have wealth, then you must be judicious in your use of that wealth, providing those things for people that are under you and work with you, Therefore, giving them jobs, for example, if you're in our capitalistic society. Or if, in fact, you employ them as servants, you must give them a decent wage, provide them with excellent living conditions. This is the way that we choose to follow our Lord Jesus Christ's command. Go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. This is his command. It is up to us to discern in our modern society what that would look like. And for each of us, that's different. God bless you on your path to reaching the teacher's side. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let us now proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of the mingling of this water and wine help us to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. I will wash my hands among the innocent, and I will encompass your altar, O Lord, that I might hear the voice of your praise and tell of all your wondrous works. I have loved, O Lord, the beauty of your house, the place where your glory dwells. Take not away my soul, O God, with the wicked, nor my life with men of blood, in whose hands are iniquities and filled with gifts. But as for me, I have walked in my innocence. Redeem me and have mercy on me. In the churches I will bless you, O Lord. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my guilt. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and that of all his church. Lord, accept the prayers and gifts we offer you in faith and love. May this Holy Eucharist bring us to your glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We see your infinite power and your loving plan of salvation. You came to our rescue by your power as God, but you wanted us to be saved by one like us. Mankind refused your friendship, but man himself was to restore it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels of heaven offer their prayer of adoration as they rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices be one with theirs in their triumphant hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness. All your actions show your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness and set us over the whole world to serve you, our creator, and rule over all creatures. Even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped us all to seek and find you. Again and again, you offered us a covenant and, through the prophets, taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things, but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe, to, to complete his work on earth and bring us the fullness of grace. 
Father, may the Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings. Let them become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate the great mystery which he has left us as an everlasting covenant. He always loved those who were his own in this world, and when the time came for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, he showed the depth of his love. While they were at supper, he took bread into his sacred hands. Looking up to you as Heavenly Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice you have given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one mystical body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially our religious leaders and patriarchs. Joris, our patriarch in Utrecht, Francis, Bishop of Rome, for me, your humble servant, and for bishops and clergy everywhere. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary and your apostles and saints. Then in your kingdom, Freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, to whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. When the apostles asked Jesus to teach them to pray, these are the words he told them. When you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and shelter from all needless anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but the faith of our church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Holy Spirit, work of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> and the will of the Father, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodia anima, amen. In vitam eternam, amen. Sanguis Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodiat anima meam, in vitam eternam, amen.
The rich suffer want and go hungry, but nothing shall be lacking to those who fear the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty Father in heaven, may the body and blood of your Holy Son give us a share in his life, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you in every way and grant you peace all the days of your life. May he free you from all anxiety and strengthen your hearts in his love. And may he enrich you with his gifts of faith, hope, and love, so that what you do in this life will bring you to the happiness of everlasting life. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration has ended for today. Let us go forth to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Well, join me now in our closing hymn, <clears throat> Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us. His love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Praise Him with your singing, praise Him with the trumpet, praise God with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with your dancing, praise God till the end of days. Come in, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. God love you all, and thank you for being with us today.